Hey guys, it's Alex. I'm back with another video and today we're getting all in on the S24 Ultra. Let's talk about it. So let me start off right off the bat by saying this is a really cool phone. Like there's not much I don't dislike about it, actually. From a hardware perspective, I think it feels really nice. A lot of people have talked about how it feels smaller than it really is, and I can attest to that. I use the 15 Pro Max, and that is, like, too big sometimes, which, spoiler alert, I'm actually using the 15 Pro again as of late. I'll do a whole separate video on that later because I know the last video I put out, I'd switch to the Pro Max, so I'll talk about that later in another video. Um, but this feels really good, and especially with the way the Android handles the software, like reaching the top of the screen, it's nice. And so from a usability perspective, hardware perspective, I like it. I like the camera placements, the fact that it actually has a SIM card slot, the fact that it has an S Pen. It feels really good. I The hardware, I just, I love it. The issue I have is with Android. And Again, it's a love-hate relationship. And before you get all sweaty in the comments, hear me out about what I have to say here. I rely on my phone for work, for business, for real-life stuff. A lot of reviews that I see are from people that are just tech YouTubers full-time, which was like, which would be great if I didn't have to like use this for running businesses, contacting companies, staying on top of things. I know that you're going to get all butthurt in the comments about how, oh, it's great, but like seriously, hear me out here for a second because I have reasoning why. I live in basically the middle of nowhere. I need Starlink internet to connect to anything. I usually don't have any bars on my phone. The best mobile provider I have gets me like one bar throughout the day. Um, and so if I don't have my Starlink internet, I basically have no cellular connection. Like it's just dead. And that's where something like this is really, really a struggle for me because a lot of people in my circle are actually Android users. And so text messages fail all the time. Calls drop all the time if it's not on Wi-Fi. Um, MMS images don't send all the time. And so like that's a big issue. That's a big problem. I'll miss phone calls from this if, you know, obviously Wi-Fi enabling is on. But if I'm like outside or away from home, I don't get that. And so on iPhone, even though iMessage love it or hate it is the standard like iphone just doesn't it doesn't send text messages like that if there's a green bubble unfortunately it takes sometimes it takes half a day for me to like send a message to somebody and so that's a big consideration of mine and i'm not going to move my house and change my lifestyle just because i want to use a certain phone that's ridiculous and so that was a big reason why this Android system is not going to work for me is because of that. Many people that I talk to on a daily basis are green bubble. So I have used things like Signal, um, uh, Telegram, WhatsApp, stuff like that. And you can say, oh, just use that anyway. But it just doesn't work that way here in the US. People text and they just prefer text. That's just the way it works. And that's even, I, I was surprised. A lot of people I know are Android users out here. But I failed to recognize and remember that not everybody is a sweaty tech nerd like myself, or maybe you if you're watching this. So most people don't even have RCS turned on. I'll go in here and like go to message a friend or something through text. RCS isn't even enabled on their device. It is on mine, but I'm like, oh, there's been one person that I've encountered that has had RCS enabled and he's an IT. And so that makes sense. Um, and so from that perspective, I was like, okay, the switch over, even though everybody on the iPhone side, I became a green bubble, broke a lot of conversations, whatever. I honestly didn't really care much about all of that. There were a few people that I was talking to and they're like, oh, you're a green bubble now. And like, people just don't care. Like, they're like, okay, cool. Like, it's not a big deal. And so that's honestly not my issue. The sendability thing is an issue, but that's just neither here nor there. That's something I could live with, I could remedy, but it's something that's not ideal. Um, and so that's not really the issue. Um, even the Apple ecosystem isn't really an issue. The whole, you know, iCloud photos, Google photos, I actually prefer Google photos, even though we use iCloud, pay for Apple music and Apple one and all of that. Like any one of Apple's products or services isn't the greatest, but the fact that it all works together cohesively is, 
and that's also another big part of my workflow. I mean, I use, you can probably see on my Mac here, I use notes, I use reminders, I use Freeform. I use all of these apps to work because I own a business. I run a business. I'm accountable to and for many people, many things um, in the marketing space. Some of them are uh, worldwide organizations that I need to keep up with. And so that's big. And I have a system that's been working for me. And if I go ahead and just want to blow that up and change it for the sake of changing it, um, then that introduces a lot of friction. And I've missed a phone, a couple of phone calls today because I don't have this thing tweaked and set up just the way I need it to. And so that's kind of an issue that at the end of the day, I'm like looking at, okay, like I could, instead of I or Apple notes, I could use notion. I love notion. Um, I use it for other things, but I'm like, okay, I could use notion. I could use uh tick, tick, different reminder apps. Number one, I don't want to pay to subscribe to something. So that's kind of a bummer to, if, if we had to do that. Um, and at the end of the day, I'm like, okay, let's say I figure out this whole new system for productivity. Great. I can use the Android phone. It didn't gain me anything. Like it didn't net me anything. I feel like I'm at the point in my life where I'm like, I don't care. I don't need to sit there and tweak on my phone. I need a phone that will actually work. And I've spent the better part of seven years on iPhone now and have built my business specifically around the cohesiveness of the Apple ecosystem. And it works very well for me. I like it. I'm not unhappy with it at all. I don't feel like I'm missing anything on the Android side because at the end of the day, I'm really not. You know, I got this phone for the past several days. I've just been tweaking it and setting it up. And there's a setting for this and a pop-up for that and sign into this and sign into that and, and all these things because the smart switch didn't work. Go figure, the Samsung app. Like I tried that thing so many times. I was scouring forums. Like I spent hours trying to get my data to copy over. Did not work. I saw a few other YouTubers have that same kind of issue. But at the end of the day, I'm like, I'm tweaking this thing, setting it up. And what did I gain? Honestly, nothing. It does the same thing. I still need to call people. I still need to text people. I lost the ability to track my wife over Find My. So then we had to get all set up on Life360 and get all these alternative apps put into place. That's just a headache and a pain in the butt. And I've lost an afternoon and evening with my kids because I was too busy messing around with this thing, trying to get it to do exactly what this thing already did. And so that was my frustration. Is like, you know what? I'm like, I'm trying to get this thing set up and tweak and I was getting there and it was it was working and it was kind of working and it was not and I was, I was figuring it out and, and doing all the things I'm like okay like again as a phone great fine but at the end of the day I'm like if I spend months getting this thing exactly where I want it to be I couldn't really identify anything that it does better or that I get more than this even simple things like battery life. Sure. Battery is way better on the galaxy than the iPhone, but I'm always near a charger or I'm driving and I can charge it. Like I never, I rarely end the day with like 50% battery. Like that's how much I keep this thing topped off. So that's not an issue. Again, on the software side of things, it was like, there's nothing that I feel like I'm like gaining by going to Android. And I'm just sorry. That's just the way it is which is a good thing. I think, you know, there's a testimony to like, there's a lot of things that I found were similar, a lot of things that were not. And sure, there's many things that are better on Android. Like I say, the customizability is endless, but I'm at a point in my life where when I was in high school and had nothing better to do, great. I'll sit on my phone and tweak it all day for no absolute reason. Or when I worked a corporate nine to five job and I wanted to keep work separated from personal and I wanted very limited or little work things on my personal device from my main work computer, then that was fine. Like I could keep things separated, but I'm at a point in my life where I have kids. I'm trying to run a business. I talk to on average 30, 40 people a day, different clients, different companies. And so, like I said, I've built my entire business and ecosystem around the Apple products. And so removing the iPhone out of that, it kind of blows up the entire thing. And like I said, I need to spend all this time finding all these pieces to put it all back together. And at the end of the day, I've gained nothing just for the ability to use Android and have an S Pen. And so I'll get off that soapbox and talk about the S Pen a little bit. The S Pen is cool. I do like it. I think it has its place, but this screen is a little bit small to write on for me. And that comes from, I typically use an iPad. I use an iPad mini as like my digital notebook. I use that thing every day as much as my Mac for writing, sketching, freeform notes, everything. I use the iPad mini like crazy. And I thought, okay, maybe there's a way I can like work this in to be similar. But again, at the end of the day, different apps, different ecosystem, different workflow, smaller screen. 
And so I didn't really see a benefit to switching over to using the S Pen. And that was a lot, the sentiment that I saw in a lot of YouTubers. Like, okay, it's nice, camera shutter, cool. But I also have a camera shutter on my watch if I wanted to prop my phone up and take a picture. It's not that hard to do. Um, and so the S Pen just really wasn't it for me. Uh, and speaking of the watch, I actually got the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic with this. You know, the rotating dial. So cool. I actually like this just as much as the uh, phone hardware and again like i think samsung is on par with apple as far as hardware goes i think in some ways they've surpassed apple just in the feel and the look and the hardware like this watch is awesome it's not on right now but i mean a round watch i have sorely missed coming from the square apple watch for so many years like this is awesome and i was trying to get it to sync up to my uh, iphone and i'm like i i would use this if the software was good. And that's my next caveat is that the software on this just wasn't as great. Again, the hardware, awesome. But at the end of the day, it just, it doesn't hold a candle to the Apple watch. You know, my phone would buzz with a notification and then a few seconds later, this would buzz. And you just get that like standard Bluetooth watch feel where it was like a little disjointed, even though it's by the same company, they haven't quite figured that part out. And I'm sure there's, there might be a setting for that somewhere, but again, why do I need to go spend time tweaking all of that? I have better things to do with my time, quite frankly, than to mess around with my phone all day. And so that is not cool in my book. Um, and just, yeah, or sometimes it would just miss notifications or I couldn't take action on them. I could see it, but then I have to pull out my phone anyway. Or I tried texting, you know, hey, text this person for me. And then it failed and it wanted me to go into settings on my phone to set it up. And I'm like, that is such a pain in the butt process that... Everything I tried to do on this phone, I had to go set up a setting first and tweak it and enable it. And I'm like, I just want to use the darn thing. And so I was getting beyond frustrated with that kind of stuff. Or just asking the weather, you know, everything is around. They want you to use Bixby, which is awful. <laughs> and so Siri's not any better, trust me. But there's just so many little points of friction throughout that where I'm just like, oh, I just kept running into frustration after frustration after frustration where I would hit a roadblock and get a setting or this doesn't work right. Or even something as simple as like unlocking the phone, which I like the fingerprint reader. It's fast, it's quick, but there was a while in there where it, it took me a minute to get used to where the placement was on the screen. And so I would hold it too long or hold it not long enough or I'd miss it. Or I'd go into like the screen editing mode, which I will enter for you. Like I'd go into like this mode, you know, where I'm like changing the lock screen. I'm like, oh, shoot, then I got to hit done. It takes a good half a second to pop back up. It's so I can enter the phone to make a phone call or answer the phone. Like there were little points of friction like that where I felt just frustrated. And that is a more of a sentiment that I share with Android across the board is that it's a little too finicky on all the gestures and the swipes you know like if you swipe up whoop, that goes home i almost dropped the phone if you swipe up it goes home if you swipe over it opens the next app over just like ios but it requires a certain finesse you know that's just not as fluid or if you swipe up from one of the corners it opens up google assistant if you swipe up and hold it just the right kind of pressure and angle it opens up your wallet which is extremely annoying i change that to only open when the phone is off or on the lock screen um, and so there's little things like that that I just found myself like clumsily activating things I didn't mean to. And that takes a long time to retrain your muscle memory to be that precise. But I mean, half the time, like I'm driving and got to like hit something or I, I'm like walking, got to hit something like I'm on the go all the time, all day. And so to have that level of like fine tuning, like if I'm sitting here at my desk, fine, that's one thing, but I'm usually on the go when I'm moving my, when I'm using my phone. And that was not great for me uh, to be able to have that and do that. And I know I sound like a broken record, but overall for me, the, the switch is just not worth it. I think as a piece of technology, it's really cool. And I can appreciate the new tech. I appreciate the hardware. I appreciate the cameras. I mean, talking about the cameras, I objectively think they're better than iPhone. And the ability to shoot in 8K and the video, like I think it looks really, really, really good. And I've been tempted to hold onto it just for the camera, but I'm like, also, okay, 200 megapixel camera out of a phone, your sensor is only so big. I have multiple Sony cameras, full frame Sony cameras that I can take with me that I do take with me when I need them. I even have smaller uh, APS-C crop sensor cameras if I don't want something too big. And so 
I'm like, I struggle to find a use for the camera even. Um, I, I find if I'm taking a picture with my phone, the photographer in me says like, keep it utilitarian, I'm taking a picture of something for a reason, or it's just a quick snapshot. If I want something like higher end and like a really good picture, I have my camera with me in my bag 99% of the time. And I'm motioning to the a seven four in front of me here. And so that's where I'm like, the camera just really doesn't do that for me. And I even tried out decks. I tried out decks here, worked off of it. And it just, meh, I don't know, like, when am I ever going to use that? You know, I have a Mac that's fully fledged. I'm never moving away from the Mac. It just, it works beautifully for what I need it to. And so overall, all these little experiences, these little things that are like, wow, that's cool. That's cool. They do add up to a really cool and compelling thing, but I'm not after cool and compelling. I'm after in my life, I'm after consistency. And I know I said this years ago in my video talking about the S21 um, Ultra 5G, that I need reliability. And I know that this phone can be reliable, but as I said earlier, I live here in the middle of nowhere. This cell signal is not reliable. Um, what is reliable is my Starlink internet. And that's what I use. Most of my conversations day to day are through iMessage. And so when those break, I missed so many conversations, people trying to call me, text me, get a hold of me. They would not go through because I was not connected to the cellular network. And that's a problem. And so I, that's a problem that I solved through um, Starlink and I'm in town often enough, but like it, it just, there's too much friction in that. And there's too much reliability that I need to stay connected. And that is why, um, personally, I'm probably not going to be switching. And even if I had signal all the time, honestly, like I say, it just does the same thing at the end of the day. And I know I'm rambling, but I, I feel like I really need to talk about this because so many people just talk about the specs and the battery and how good is it and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Just go buy it. It's so cool. But the tech enthusiast in me says, yes, so cool. But the realistic um, husband, father, business owner, just real life says like, it's impractical for what I need. Why do I need to fix something that's not broke? This has been working great for me in amongst the Apple ecosystem. It ain't broke. I'm not going to fix it. At the end of the day, it still does the same thing. I needed to make calls, send texts, check my email, keep up on social media stuff, uh, respond to clients, and just keep up with those kinds of things. And yes, nobody will disagree that this does those things. I don't know if you can say it does those things better because the ability to send a text or phone call is like literally A or B. You either do it or you don't. There is no better or worse. And so being able to do that on this phone, the amount of time it took me to tweak this thing to set it up just the way I like it so that it honestly functioned and mirrored in a very similar way to my iPhone and trying to get it to plug into my workflow, my work system here, the same way my iPhone did, but not quite the same way. But, oh, I have a, I have an S pen or I have some AI features on the photos app, which I'll get to in a minute is not that great. Um, Oh, I have decks. Oh, I have all these, like, I have a better camera, like that I might use. I have this feature I might use. It's just something that I don't think is worth it. And so for that reason, I'm just going to return this stuff. I'm going to bring it back and I'm just, I'm happy on iOS. I really am. And I, I don't think that's a bad thing. Um, and I know all the Android people, they're going to leave butthurt comments and the people on iOS are going to go, yeah, you're right. <laughs> that's just the way it is. And I, I understand that. I'm sorry. But I just, I, I can't do it. I won't do it because of everything I've talked about. But on the surface, great phone. If it works for you and your life and it, that's what you value, then yes. But unfortunately, I don't value new, latest, greatest, cool over functional. And for me, this is functional because of my lifestyle and what I do. And so that's just what it comes down to, bottom line. But I thank you so much for watching and for listening to me ramble. I know it's been a while since I released a video, but I wanted to get on this S24 train because I've seen a lot of YouTubers lately in the past week talk about how I've switched to it and full time and blah, 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 and all these things. And I just don't think it's worth it for me. So I want to put my two cents out there, explain my reasoning, my situation, went and bought one, going to bring it back while I still can. And, um, yeah, I just don't think it's worth it for me, but try it out. I mean, if you're remotely interested, I certainly was, I spent weeks going back and forth. Do I get it? Do I not? And it's like, if you can get it like from Best Buy or Samsung and be able to have that return period, try it out. 
break all your iMessage group chats. I encourage you to mess with it, you know, and that's how you'll know. That's how you'll figure it out. And then at the end of the day, once the newness and the excitement kind of wears off, you're kind of like, oh, this pretty much does the same thing my iPhone did. And I don't really use all those other features that were in there. And so maybe it's not worth it. Was it worth it? You know? And so that's why I'm going back while I still can to the iPhone and just uh, putting things back the way they were. And on the note of the AI feature stuff, because this is known as the AI phone, it's cool, but it's also very similar to like what you get with Google one now and not even a pixel phone anymore. Like if you just are a Google one subscriber, then you have that, the magic eraser and the stuff like that, or you learn how to use Photoshop. Like as somebody that does this for a living Photoshop Lightroom, like it's not that hard to just duplicate all of those things and do that kind of a similar thing in Photoshop if I really had to or wanted to. And so the whole AI magic eraser, move things, whatever. Okay. It's, <laughs> it's kind of, it feels a little gimmicky. Same thing with even the circle to search. Everybody talks about that. The circle to search is amazing, but I don't really like it. Or it's not that I don't like it. I used it a couple times scrolling through reels and somebody like had a hoodie and I was like, Oh, I like that hoodie circle to search. It was close, but didn't find it. Uh, there was one time it nailed what I was looking for, a little piece of camera gear. I'm like, okay, cool. Now I know what that is, but that's it, you know? And it's basically just Google lens search, Google image search. So if you have the Google app, even on your phone, you just screenshot it and upload the, the screenshot. So it saves you like, you can do the same thing on iPhone. It just takes a few extra steps. If you're really that interested and invested in finding something. And so that's another thing where I'm like, I don't need to have a whole separate extra phone, extra ecosystem just to do that. And so, yeah, all that to say, I will not be switching to the Galaxy S24 Ultra. I will stay on iPhone and I'm excited to see what, and, what uh, Android, gosh, Google IO is coming out soon. So I have Android on the brain. Um, but what Apple is going to do with iOS coming up, we have WWDC, they're teasing some AI stuff. There's rumors that you're going to be able to customize it and move icons wherever, just like on Android, which I'm like, is cool. That'd be awesome. But again, at the end of the day, I'm like, I'm not into tweaking my phone that much. I, there's a couple things I brought over from Android, specifically just the ability to like have apps low within reach. I like that. Um, but again, it's about it. And this is, this is like a blank spaces app. If you're wondering that, uh, puts that in there. Um, but yeah, no, I just, I like this. It's comfortable. It's familiar. Sure. It's boring, but I don't need my technology to entertain me. I don't sit here to like let the, my phone entertain me and give me some kind of a dopamine hit it does not like instagram and tiktok do that enough <laughs> the layout of my phone does not need to give me that it's predictable it's reliable it works it's a tool that's what it is for me and so that's why i will not be switching to android and the s24 ultra but thank you guys so much for watching i appreciate it be sure to hit subscribe in the bottom i want to make this review as kind of the one that nobody else is talking about and i will see you in the next one